That's where I messed up. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about why you should quarantine your fish. Well, at least why I choose to quarantine my fish and why you should consider quarantining your fish. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I've always quarantined my fish because I haven't. I have tried, you know, I've risked it before and uh, most of the times it's been okay. But then there was that one time that was enough not to have me risk it anymore because it pretty much wiped out my entire tank. So that being said, I do sort of quarantine my fish now. I put them in a tank where I observe them. I don't necessarily put them in a tank with treatments. Do I think you, can, you should do it? Yes, if it's an option. I have been lucky enough to have these fish rolling in here for over a year now and everybody is happy. These have been the same clownfish, same flash, same uh, subi, and two of the uh, chromies that I have left have maintained. I think I had five of them to start. Uh, but th this has been my crew here for like over a year and they have been all happy and everything, but this was not always my crew. Oh, and I forgot I have Grumpy down there too. Uh, this has not always been my crew. Some of you guys that have been here from the start may know that I had a completely different set of fish when I first got this tank, most of which came with the tank, a beautiful purple tank, which gave to Jason because I knew he was just gonna be too big for this tank. I had a different yellow tang. I did have a blue, oh, it's been so long and I have a terrible memory. I wanna say I had another blue tang. I had a, an angelfish maybe? No, not an angelfish. Uh, I don't know, I'll find a video. Here it is, these are the fish that I had. I had a clown called Ghost, which I absolutely loved. He was the dopest freaking clownfish. And then I went out and bought a yellow-eyed coal tank. That's where I messed up. Not necessarily buying the yellow-eyed coal tank, but where I got him at the shop, uh, I'm pretty sure that they said that they quarantined before, and I was just like, that's enough, you know? And uh, let me tell you, it wasn't. My entire tank went into havoc, and I'm pretty sure it was because of this yellow coal tank because nothing else was added to the tank. So, um, yeah, it was super unfortunate. It was definitely a learning experience, and I now won't do that again. I was unfortunate and fortunate enough to learn firsthand that quarantining is something that you wanna do with your fish when having them in a reef tank. Now, you might say like, well, Bianca, why is that a fortunate thing? Well, it's fortunate because I learned, you know? And it's unfortunate, obviously, because I lost all my fish, so yeah. Shout out to Dennis for bringing up this question. Welcome to the reefing community, and hopefully this helps you answer a little bit on why I decide to quarantine my fish. There's gonna be a bunch of different things and different reasons that people do it. But the overall reason is because you wanna make sure that whatever you're entering into your aquarium is healthy and doesn't have any diseases on it before you drop it into your aquarium that's already been here. Like my fish are chilling. The last thing I wanna do is bring a fish in that has a disease and then gives, gives the disease to all my other fish. You know, that is what you're trying to avoid. That is exactly what happened to me. Most likely. Here's a little flashback. If you guys haven't watched me set up the whole quarantine process, it was a freaking disaster. I tried my best to get all these fish uh, back to their health. Unfortunately, it just didn't work out. Um, like I, I, I set up a whole tank. I went to the store. I picked up a whole separate tank. I found a spot in my room to put it. I had to move a bunch of stuff. I medicated the water. It was a lot. I'm not gonna lie, like it was a lot. And I understand that not a lot of people have like a spot to set that up because it was hard for me like i it was a disaster but it had to be done what was i supposed to do with the fish you know i had to keep this tank fallow for i think it was 70 days or something which sucked i set up that tank there was salt creep all over my room not all over but like all over the dresser and on my speakers it it sucked and then the fact that was even worse about it is that the fish didn't make it you know, like that's the worst part. I would definitely recommend setting up some sort of small tank. Uh, granted, I feel like this is all if, uh, I guess people would see it either way. You, I would say if you don't have any fish in your tank, then, you know, that would kind of be your quarantine tank, not with medication and stuff, but 
like where you observe them and if there's something wrong you could pull them out but then a lot of people would say then that would be stuck in the system so even if those fish had something and they died in there then when you brought new fish in it would already have that disease in the system so i guess that would be your kind of your call like if you're first adding fish whether you want to set up a separate tank to quarantine them before and wash them before you bring them into your main display tank um yeah i guess that could go either way but if you do already have fish in your main tank and you are able to set up a little quarantine tank somewhere i highly recommend it just to watch them um, I wouldn't necessarily say you need to medicate them, but I guess that's another thing, you know, that people would do. I personally, if I don't see something wrong with the fish, why would I medicate it? Mostly it's just kind of to watch them and see if you see anything popping up, if you see them acting funny, anything like that. I don't know exactly how long you should quarantine them for. Definitely read up on that and check it. There is a lot of forms and good content out there, guys. You just have to literally go to google.com and type in your questions type in any questions that you guys have remember there are millions of other reefers out there that started at some point and people ask questions like so most likely there's somebody out there that had the exact same questions as you guys and then there are people that are way 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 more knowledgeable than me that have detailed answers to like why you should do something and the benefits and the cons of doing it I, i'm not that like i'm that this is not the channel for it i'm just not that detailed with it i am not a scientific reefing channel i am just here to document my experiences and have fun with it but there are awesome sources that you can get that if that's what you're looking for anyway i am lucky now that i have this tank that if i have a little baby fish uh, something like when I brought the diamond goby in, I could let him chill in here for a couple weeks as my quarantine tank because I'm not worried about anything in this tank getting any diseases. So this is a great little happenstance that happened if I have a little fish. Obviously, if I was getting a tang or something, it wouldn't freaking work in here. Is it really considered quarantining still if you're... Yes, yes, I feel like it is. You're observing the fish and keeping him away from your other fish to make sure that he is healthy and agile and ready to go before you put him in your main tank. I have now been very lucky that all of my fish um, have been happy in here and I haven't needed to do anything else or quarantine any other fish other than that diamond goby to get them all in here. Ooh, Quincy making a rare appearance. He must be hungry. Although I just put starfish in here for him, I don't know. He kind of like comes out and lets me know when he's hungry, which is cool. Other than that, in order to keep my fish healthy, I don't really do anything special. I keep them fed. Speaking of dots, I see a couple dots on my blue hippo, which has got me in a little bit of a panic. Um, the thing is, they usually stress out. I only see it on the... Yeah. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. Um because that's definitely not what you want to see. I haven't added anybody new. He might just be a little stressed. I'm going to make sure to put some nori in here. I'll probably actually do it right now. That could definitely just be a myth I have, but I feel like if I'm not feeding him enough nori, or her, sorry, if I'm not feeding her enough nori, then she gets a little stressed out. So I just dropped some nori in there, and clearly homegirl is going to town. She's not acting weird or scratching or anything. So I'll just keep an eye on it and make sure that I keep the feeding of the nori a little bit heavier. There have been a couple times where my blue hippo tang has gotten a couple little spots where it looks like some ick is starting. Again, I feel like they are very much prone to like stress ick much quicker than other fish. Oh, hello. How's it going? If your fish are well fed and have a strong immune system, they are more likely to fight off diseases. Think about it like a human. If you're a strong, healthy, you know, you got a good immune system, most likely you're gonna get over illnesses quicker than somebody who's got a weak immune system. Same kind of concept. The healthier your fish are, the more likely they will be to freaking shake it, shake it. Quarantine your fish if you have the means to do so. Keep your fish fed, happy, and you know, the rest is just, you gotta go with the reef and flow. You gotta go with the flow. Just do your best and make decisions
accordingly. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit the subscribe button, turn the notifications on. We got new fish videos every single week, Tuesdays and Fridays right now. Don't forget to get your merch, shoplater.com. Skelly Fest is September 24th in Miami, Florida, the Ultimate Aquatic Expo. Tickets are only $12 online. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Later.